Let's take a look at this arpeggio roll. This is a really cool roll pattern to get you out of your normal um, patterns such as the square roll and the forward reverse roll that we use all the time. And it's just a really neat sounding roll to use for chords, uh, especially in first position. Um, this is a roll that Alan Shelton first brought to the bluegrass um, territory. And um, let's take a look at this roll pattern, how it goes. It sounds like this. All right, now what this does is go thumb, index, middle, and that's on strings four, three, two. And then thumb, index, middle on strings three, two, one. Then you do that two times, so it's gonna sound like this. And then we do a square roll on strings five, two, three, and one. And that completes the roll, so it kind of resolves the tension. So now let's take a look at this first exercise. We're gonna go through two measures of G, two measures of C, two measures of D, and then two measures of G. It's just gonna be a G lick at the end. So what we're gonna do is keep the first G chord open. Now we're gonna do a partial two finger C chord index on second string, first fret, middle, second fret, fourth string. Okay. Now, um, we're going to a D, uh, actually we're going to be going to this partial D chord and, um, we're going to have, it's really a D six chord, just a two finger chord. Scruggs and JD Crow use this all the time. Index is going to be on third string, second fret, ring on fourth string, fourth fret. Here's our roll. And then our G lick. So here it is. So has a really nice sound to it and it's very easy to use. That's the coolest part about it. You can just you can just fit these in so many chord progressions and um, just uh, has a really cool thing going with it. So now let's look at the next exercise and we're gonna now be using a bluesier, jazzier sound. We're gonna be using seventh chords. The first one is two measures of G7. Index finger is on third string, second fret, middle finger, fourth string, third fret. And here's our two measure roll. <laughs> I love that sound. Sounds really cool and jazzy. Now we're going to go to a partial C7 chord. I hold this a lot of times like this with index on second string, first fret, middle, fourth string, second fret, and a ring finger on third string, third fret. That could also be uh, replaced with the pinky if you want. It just depends on what's more comfortable. I kind of go between the two sometimes, um, just depending. Here's what it sounds like with the roll. And then what we're going to do is go to a regular old simple two finger D7 chord, index, second string, first fret, middle, third string, second fret. That's a bluesier version of the lick as well. I just do the normal first half. And then I put my middle finger on the third fret of the fourth string to hit that F note and it just has a cool thing. So here it is, I'll play the whole thing.
So there's our first two exercises that I wrote down. Definitely take all those parts and just put them in all the different songs you can think of. Nine Pound Hammer, Blue Ridge Cabin Home. It's just a really great way to create a simple but very cool sounding second solo. You always want to know the melody of the tune. This is just a cool way to branch out a little bit and uh, create a different sound for your second solo. Um, here's another example that I don't have on the tab, but I'm going to explain it to you. And uh, this is a Little Maggie break. We're, I'm going to show you how we can add, uh, for, go from G to F now. So we're going to go um, two measures of G, and then we're going to play a partial F chord. It's a three finger F chord. We're just lifting off the pinky. So index, um, second string, first fret, middle, third string, second fret, ring finger, fourth string, third fret, and then first string open. It's an F6. Sounds like this. Pretty neat sounding um, chord. Here's the here's the the version of this. I changed one thing in there that you'll want to practice as well. So I'll go through this. We had two measures of G, two measures of the F, six. Then the chord progression goes G, one measure, D, one measure, and then back to G with the lick. So what I did here for the one measure lick or the one measure roll is a little different. So we're going it's a little bit shorter. So thumb index middle on strings four, three, two. Thumb index middle on strings three, two, one. And then just thumb on the fifth, middle on the first. So this is for one measure increments. That way I can do chord progressions like this. So anyway, that's a couple ways to use it. Um, with what I just showed you, that's a lot of vocabulary that you can spread around in different songs and just try. So it's up to you to take this and try it in as many songs as you know to where you can get a good handle on how to use it, where to use it, and um, it'll just kind of add a cool little thing to your playing that you might not have already done. So anyway, have fun with this, and we'll see you in the next lesson.